Chair, we'll have a session on three parts. One will be a testimony for Lagos. We'll have at least 35 minutes uh, between elders and younger to share the story related to the land restoration. And then after this session, where we will have the human face of land restoration, we'll have the practice from the ground. That's me what CSOs have to contribute uh, in the uh, combat against desertification. So for the first session of 35 minutes, uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Ambassador Byung uh, Kwan, Chairman of Future Forest South Korea. So we'll have a cross-generation uh, inter um, intervention dialogue. Uh, she will dialogue with um, Yugratna, Chairman of Yungo in Germany. After the session, the discussion will have another part uh, between uh, Boani Shanka Kusum uh, from India and Alvaro Morales from Chile. So let's start by the first uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador Boa. He is the President of Future Forest, South, South Korea NGOs and serve now as land ambassador after serving four consecutive terms as the longest serving Thailand ambassador of the NCCD and serve as member of 15 leaders of the NCCD on the UNDDD, United Nations Decade of Desert and Fights Against Desertification serving from uh, 2010 to 2020. <coughs> He was also named as the first sustainable land uh, manager champion of the UNCCD. He was Korean ambassador in Myanmar, Australia, and China. During his term in China, he initiated Korea-China tree planting project for combating desertification and yellow dust. He was decorated with friendship award by the government of China in 2014 with the title of ecological error. So, Mr. Ambassador, you had a long history related to combating desertification and managing the environment. I know that many stories related to environment have a human face. When we were discussing to prepare this session and ask you what will be your testimony for legacy, you told me that you have a story with a question from your daughter about sun dust in China. Could you let us to know more about this story for the legacy? You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Chair. And, uh, Yes, uh, I will tell from my bottom of my heart and off the cuff. When I arrived in Beijing, China, early springtime of 1998, the thick dust storm covered. Uh, 80 years, more than 80 years old, and you are still serving, working with young people. Um, we have a young brother who starts very young, also uh, being involved in the environmental uh, management. So, young Gratna uh, Sri Vastara is 20 years old from India, has been involved in the process of environment conservation since the age of 12. She is part of the board of plant for the planet working in over 80 countries. She is also a young delegate and junior negotiator for EOSIS countries in the UNFC Triple C and serve as focal point of youth NGOs constituency to a UN environment. You have learned from uh, Mr. Ambassador. <coughs> what can you gather from his testimony. And then we know that you have already your story. 
what will be for you the perspective for the future? Please. Thank, thank you very much, um, Emmanuel, and thanks um, a lot to uh, the co-presidency, the government of India, and the, the secretariat for hosting um, this intergenerational dialogue yet again. It's a very um, positive precedence for civil society and parties to obviously interact with each other, hear each other's views, and uh, within you know a formal um, modality. So many congratulations for that. Uh, just as a departure point, I'm 23 years old. I do wish I was 20 <laughs> still. Um, um, but yeah, thanks um, to Mr. Pon, who spoke before and uh, shared you know his story about how even at such an old age he has been working with uh, young people from different parts of the world. And he started um, his engagement when um, he was uh, young, I believe with his government and while motivating all the young people at the same time. And this is, you know, where the famous um, terminology that we have been using, the intergenerational uh, component lies. Um, intergenerational <coughs> equity, um, as you may have heard of, is a recognized principle within the preamble of the Paris Agreement. It's also um, recognized in Agenda 2030 and has, you know, references, maybe not with the exact term, in Agenda 21. So it's already um, one of the strong principles that member states have agreed to, which reflect what um, the countries, what civil society, and what everyone else need to be doing at this time to uh, take action against environmental degradation, against desertification, and you know, um, increase your climate ambitions. For me, uh, because this session is about um, is sharing stories, I um, started engagement uh, within climate change activities or environmental activities uh, since grade 6. So it was back in 2006. Um, we had an uh, NGO called as Tarumitra. I mean, it is still um, is very active <coughs> within India. They were part of, um, uh, they started a chapter in our school. And that is uh, when my journey with this has started. I was born in Sonbhadra, which is one of, um, I mean, for those of you who are from India, you would know it is a place which hosts one of the biggest coal mines. Um, it has, over decades, suffered a lot of destruction of flora and fauna and of its natural landscape because of all the mining dust that gets settled. There's almost a mountain there. And I remember um, going to visit my grandma. Um, and there used to be a pond right outside her house and over the years, I mean, over just two, three years, that pond basically became um, unrecognizable. There were settlements made on that. Um, you couldn't, you know, drink or uh, fish or do any sort of other activities in it. So that was one of the inflection points together with many other observations um, that I had when, when I was uh, young. Um, I, because we were very active within our school delegation on doing these activities, um, I had a privilege to travel to Norway um, for one of the children's conference that was hosted by UN Environment. And that's where really basically my um, engagement within the United Nations processes started. Um, it has, of course, been supported by the UN agencies because I come um, from a middle class family. My parents themselves cannot afford a flight ticket for me you know, to um, go abroad. And um, building from there, we have been involved um, in many of the negotiation streams, whether it is UNAIA, whether it is uh, you know, rules of procedures of different governing council processes that you're involved in. And as a young person, it was not that easy for me to you know, understand um, a lot of those things that were going on, which is why uh, one of the major uh, work that I've been doing in last years has yeah. been um, capacity building of young people in these domains. Um, Speaking specifically of what we have been doing on the ground, Plan for the Planet, um, I've been involved with them since over a decade and they're active in more than 80 countries, having trained around 70 to 80,000 young people uh, through peer-to-peer -peer learning um, workshops. And you know, this is um, a part of engagement that has been done on ground. Speaking now, you know, uh, just trying to um, go into what uh, we have been trying to do within the convention, or the desertification convention. Meaningful youth engagement needs to be a priority. And it needs to be a priority for the UN, which it has demonstrated through the adoption of system-wide UN youth strategy last year and many other positive precedences that exist. But it needs to be a priority for the countries. Young people are not just a moral standpoint that you can have because you see that, oh, yes, you know, children planting trees looks nice or they look good for the optics. Young people are the generation that will be implementing 
the NDCs that you write today, whether that is a time frame of 2030, 2035, it comes down to this generation to eventually implement them. Engaging them in processes, engaging them in decision making is a part of what needs to be done at a system-wide level. And this is not because young people are, you know, what I said, the model standpoint, but they bring a lot of diverse experiences to the table. They are researchers, they do, uh, they form a part of the task force that will be working on renewable energy jobs in coming years. And at the same time, they are also um, taking active role in civic participation, which is, you know, very important to encourage. 